Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a decanter to use for olive oil or vinegar or oil and vinegar or anything like that. So first thing I'm doing here is combing up and then centering the clay. I think there might be a little bit of an air bubble in there. This is recycled clay, so that happens now and then. I might have to pop those air bubbles. Go down the center and bring it out. <coughs> and then compress the center. That's really, really important. It's one of the things that causes S cracks or prevents S cracks if we correctly. compress the center. So I tend to go back and forth a couple of times. Sometimes I'll do this with a rib. Sometimes I'll just do it with a sponge. And then I want to bring the clay up. So I wet my fingers and I use a claw grip. And I just sort of pull up and roll towards the center while I'm compressing with my right hand. And that just helps to give me a good amount of clay with some height to begin with. I'll just grab the clay from the bottom and we're going to pull up and I'm keeping everything going towards the center because this is a piece that's going to have a narrow neck and I'm going to need to collar in. So I might as well keep it closed in now. Now that clay has a memory. have an air bubble in it. the decanter is pretty much how I want it because once I neck in I'm not going to have a whole lot of opportunity to adjust the shape. So I've got the base done. Now I'm going to collar in. I don't have a whole lot of water on the bottom. But now I'm getting my fingers really wet. I'm kind of speeding up the wheel a little bit actually. And I'm bringing this in at every point where I can. I can feel where that air bubble is now. You can probably see it as it's going around. Maybe it'll end up in the reclaim bucket. I'm pulling up and towards the center because as I collar it in, I created a lot more thickness. And that gives me room to make a taller, thinner neck. That's what I want to do on this piece. Check that air bubble again. So 
Sometimes with, with air bubbles, you have to pierce them a couple of times while you're throwing them. And that's okay, that doesn't hurt anything. Better to find them and get them out now than when the piece is trying to dry around them and blowing up. Now what I do here, because I've got a lot of thickness up here, I just bring it here and I pinch and pull up. As will often happen, there's a little bit of unevenness at the top. So just take my needle tool, cut that off, like so. Push up that edge. Come back here. This to be in further. I'm being very careful not to get water inside because even with the sponge on the stick, I'm making this really narrow and it's going to be difficult to get that sponge on the stick in there. This is not quite as graceful as I would like. So I'm just going to alter it a little bit by applying some pressure with this rib on the outside and hoping to get some more height. secret measuring tool, which is a wine cork. It's always good to drink wine if you're a potter. And make sure that this will accept the wine cork. If you notice, I wet the wine cork. I don't want anything to touch this clay that isn't at least a little bit wet. Otherwise it'll stick. So that fit. The reason I do that, I can either throw a stopper or I can use a wine cork for a stopper, provided I make the neck so that a wine cork will fit in there. And if you do that, you'll notice that wine corks do come in various different sizes. The next thing I'm going to do is put my foot on the bottom of this. What I'm doing is I'm taking my homemade visa rib and cutting that foot in there. I 
still think that looks a little chunky on the bottom. So I'm going to take this rib and just give it some shape. Be more the shape that I want. And more the finish that I want. The nice thing about making your own ribs out of things like credit cards is you get something that is uniquely yours and something that does exactly what you want it to do. If you buy ribs in the store, like this one, it does exactly what Michael Sherrill wanted it to do, which is fine with me, but it's not perfect for every occasion that I need. excess slip and allowing some of that nice design from the um, reclaimed clay to show through. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a, um, a handle on one side. I've made sure that my cork will fit in there. I'll put a handle coming off of here. So right now I want to put my spout on there. So I have my hands a little bit wet, a little bit damp from having thrown, but I'm using the towel to dry them off pretty well. And now I'm just going to take two fingers on the outside and just one on the inside, and I'm going to make a spout. a little bit more once it gets dry. Drier. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. If you have any interest in seeing a specific demo, send me an email or write something in comments and I'll try to make what you want. Thanks.